live from Washington, D.C. It's theCUBE, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Washington, D.C. for the special presentation of theCUBE at Oracle Cloud World. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Mark Johnson, Senior Vice President, North American Sales for the Public Sector for Oracle. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. We are in public sector land. This is like the epicenter of all public sector right. action. Right. Um, the government, which we all know has been moving mm. aggressively to a digital transformation of their own. Right. The website crash, they couldn't get it working. They bring the guys from California yeah. in, a couple yeah. developers, millennials probably, banging right. out some new code. Bottom line, huge legacy transformation. You guys have a big customer base there in, in public sector. Right. What's the vibe like? What's the orientation? Are they like huddling? They understand where they're trying to go? Give us the update. Yeah, they, uh, basically what's, what's happened is with the IT budgets continuing to flatline or shrink, more and more of these government agencies are trying to consolidate data centers, consolidate their spend, try to drive spend out of the, the infrastructure that they have so they can acquire new technologies such as cloud. But I think from my perspective, when you look at the public sector, it's about the agencies um, using a lot of their IT dollars today to reinvest in their old sustainment systems and they don't have enough money to put on the front end, yeah. which is net new you know, modernization efforts. That's so classic, we're seeing that. Dave, Dave always talks about it from as an analyst perspective, 70% of your budget is used to operate, not create new, new opportunities. Yeah, and the, Same in, the, thing? In, the, in, the, in the feds, it's about 80%. So 80% 80, 80 of the money is spent for O&M or sustainment. The other 20% is for, let's call it net new initiatives, but you know, you got to parse that out. And certainly the digital, digital mm -hmm. servicing of having value for the audience, the, the citizens of the agencies, is now going to be more developer folks with APIs, cloud computing, yeah. you're seeing cloud be a perfect fit, but it's almost like it's a perfect use case for the whole inside out Oracle cloud machine because you yeah, want to provide is. agility and development, rapid, rapid deployment, yeah. but yet you got a ton of compliance yeah. checkboxes. Well, you know, in, in, in the government, let's just talk federal government, there's, you know, let's say 3,500 data centers. Let's call it 3,000 data centers. They're consolidating a lot of those, and it's very difficult for a lot of the new cloud services to actually move their legacy proprietary systems into a private cloud. So the Oracle Cloud Machine actually is a, a perfect opportunity for Oracle to bring our private cloud into their, into their data center and actually run their systems and actually maintain and support it. So talk a little bit more about the digital transformation, specifically in the context of, of the government. Um, a lot of push on consolidation. Is that a cost savings that can then shift into the digital transformation? So what does that mean for government and how is that being funded? Yeah, basically the, the agencies right now, let, let's call it their, they have flat IT budgets. Some are up a little bit, some are down, but with sequestration, I would say they're flat to maybe slightly negative from an IT perspective. Right. So what they're trying to do is what I've seen is there's less modernization efforts and the net new efforts, the, the, let's call it the, the digital government type or the, the net new um, modernization efforts are, there's very few of those right now. So basically they're trying to you know, squeeze dollars out of their infrastructure and apply that to new initiatives, and it's very difficult right now. Um, we're, we're seeing uh, very few new starts. We're seeing most of their money going to sustainment, not as much going into net new programs. So when you look at the cloud, you have software as a service, you have all the platform and infrastructure services. It's an area we're focused on, but it's a slow move. You know, they're risk averse, and we're not seeing them do a heavy adoption yet on, on that. So, early days of cloud, uh, the, the government, the federal government in particular, the federal CIO of that company was one of the early proponents of cloud, yeah. kind of made it a mandate. Cloud, per, know, cloud first cloud initiative. First. Yeah. Was that unsuccessful in terms of meeting the objectives? I mean, obviously wanted to save money, and be more agile. Did it sort of, I don't want to say backfire, but it did, did it not meet the expectations? No, the, the, you know, the cloud first initiative came out, I think, around 2011. Right. 
they uh, basically took the non-mission critical, like email, things like that, things that are non-mission critical. Safe stuff. Yeah, safe stuff, and they started moving those to the cloud. So in the end, they did move a lot of those systems, those applications to the cloud. And you, you're continuing to see them take let's call it non-mission critical systems or applications and offload those to a third party cloud provider. Um, as for the mission critical business, that's yet to be uptaken. But I guess, you know, from my perspective, when you look at it, a lot of the, the savings is, comes from people. And in the government, as you know, you know, the people are still there. So basically, you have legacy systems, they need to move them off to a third party cloud provider and they need to retire the systems in order to save money. And that's the part that I don't know if we're realizing the savings in the federal government yet, but ultimately they will as they retire these older legacy systems, you know. But it's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, it is. I mean, if you're essentially running the government on those legacy systems, it's kind of hard to unhook them, right? So, yeah. so I'm trying to understand the Oracle play there, which is if you look at something like what we saw today announced the Oracle Cloud Machine, it's essentially a cloud. I can bring that into my data center and create a cloud-like experience. Yeah, here, here's, the, here's the Oracle play. So one is uh, there's you know, 90%, 95 percent of what the government has today is on-premise yep. systems, okay? There's only maybe, let's say 6% of it's in a cloud provider. So those systems, what we're doing is we're consolidating them, we're modernizing them, we're bringing in engineered systems. So the engineered systems are coming in and we're uh, driving a consolidated play in the data centers to drive their costs down, let's say 50% in many cases on these applications and the sustainment dollars. And those dollars we're trying to reapply for net new initiatives like cloud and things like that. Okay, so Mark, we got uh, going to break away for the keynotes in a few minutes. We got a couple yep, more minutes sure. left. I want to ask, obviously, about the, the the elephant in the room, so to speak. Yep. Kind of a big data reference, I guess, uh, um, with security, cyber yeah. security, sure. huge issue, certainly for the government, not just for enterprises, but everything. What right. are you guys doing? What does Oracle have? Obviously, the bar is high. Yeah. For you guys. Yeah. What's I, your, yeah. What's, what's we your need a do-over. I like to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got to tell you, it's um, you know, our. Oracle runs most of the government databases. Not all, but we have a big, big market share. So what we do, my organization does, we have a whole security suite. I actually bring in, I have a team of uh, security experts, and basically we have, uh, uh, basically we have a non-invasive script we run against the systems. We actually put together a profile of their strengths and weaknesses, and we actually coach the government agencies on how to make their so environments more secure. It's not just technology, it's no, practices as well. And it's not, it's not about you know, selling new software in many cases, it's about they already own the software yeah. and the services and we're trying to make them okay. more security aware from a layer perspective. Okay, we got a break for the keynote. Sean Price is up next on the yep. keynote stage. Mark Johnson here on theCUBE, breaking it down, Senior Vice President, Federal Sales uh, for the government, public sector, I should say, not federal, but all public sector. It's theCUBE, we'll be right back with more live action from DC after this short break.